Okay, so welcome back to another video. Today's uh, verification is that we want to show that the gamma of the conjugate of some complex number z is equal to the conjugate of the entire gamma function itself. So this is actually really simple to do. There's actually, um, today's video, I'm gonna actually be proving this um, two, in two ways. One of them is just by uh, simply just using the, um, the integral representation of gamma. And then the second way is actually using what's known as the Weierstrass form of um, the gamma function itself. And it's pretty straightforward because it's just using the properties of, you know, complex conjugates. This is why, you know, we have, you know, the conjugates of the complex numbers. So there's really nothing to be said here because um, this is, as, as you're seeing, this is actually just a very simple verification, except this is going to be done in um, two ways. So let's start off with the most direct way, and that is by using the integral representation. So suppose that um, if we set some complex number z, we'll call this for a plus i times the imaginary unit i and b, such that a and b are real numbers, but also that the real part of z is actually strictly greater than zero. So we say that gamma of z, the uh, representation is written as follows. So we have the improper integral from zero to infinity of t to the power z subtract one times e to the negative t dt, Okay, so now let's suppose that we plug the complex number z back into our, you know, um, integral. So for our substitution, we have t, and then now, um, well, we'll put it this way because we can actually write that, um, we know that, for example, t is equal to e to the power ln of t. So we'll be writing that in form of an exponential base. So what I can do is we can um, substitute z back into here and then write this as e then um, I'll separate this in with the reals and the, um, the imaginary. So that we have a subtract one, then add this with um, the imaginary unit i and n times b of ln of t, multiply with e to the negative t dt, okay? Then if we expand this out a little further, since um, if we just distribute the ln of t's, so we can actually separate this from the real and the imaginaries, of course. So now we would have that this is the integral from zero to infinity, then t to the power a subtract one, then multiply with e to the negative t, but then we have e to the power i, um, i times b times ln of t, so we just actually just expand that using Euler's formula and say we have cosine of b times ln of t, and then um, add this with the imaginary unit i times sine of b ln of t dt. Now, now we just have some generalization for, you know, the, um, well, I'm just missing one parentheses right here. So now we have something for gamma of z. So now let's suppose we um, plug in the complex conjugate. So now gamma of um, the conjugate of z. So here we would have uh, now the integral from zero to infinity. Then this is just t to the power z conjugate subtract one e to the negative t then dt. Now, if we expand this out a little further, then we can write this as the um, proper integral zero to infinity. So everything of the real part will be the same, a minus one, then e to the negative t. Now, however, when we do the um, expansion of Euler's formula, so cosine of b ln of t, then we're gonna have a minus. You can actually check this yourself and see that. Um, then times i sine of b ln of t, then dt, then we see that um, since there's the minus and the positive, that's actually by using with the whole polar formula and then that's taking its conjugate. So therefore we see that this is just the conjugate of the entire zeta function, just like that. Okay, so now we have the extreme left hand side and then equals the extreme right hand side with our verification. So we just start off with how um, gamma of z behaves with plugging in you know, some complex number. Taking this conjugate, then we get the following by using the integral representation. Okay, so that's done for uh, part one. So let's actually do the second method and that's by using the Weierstrass, um, the Weierstrass form of the gamma function. So here the Weierstrass form of gamma z is actually written as follows. So we have that gamma of z is actually equal to e to the negative um, lowercase gamma divided by z, then divided by z, then this is multiplied by the infinite product index n is equal to one of one plus z divided by n inverse, then multiply with e 
to the power z divided by n, therefore, whereas um, lowercase gamma is actually the euler masheroni constant. Okay, so now let's just plug in our um, complex conjugate. So conjugate is z, so therefore we have e, then just substitute everything for z with the complex conjugate. So z conjugate over here, infinity, n is equal 1. 1 plus z conjugate divided by n. It's the inverse, and then e times z conjugate, then divided by n. So we have to actually use a little bit of some simple properties when um, changing everything from here, but now that we have the um, conjugates. So let's start off one by one. So first off, we see that um, first we have e to the negative lowercase gamma z conjugate and divided by z conjugate. Using those properties, we see that, um, and you can check all this yourself and, um, just for the whole verification, see if you get the, if it matches. You'll get that um, by using the complex conjugate property. So um, this is just, the, um, so negative gamma times z conjugate is basically the exponent, it's the entire exponent, like conjugate itself. Um, denominator still stays the same but if you further extend that then the entire numerator is its conjugate so this means e to the power of negative z um, or negative gamma times z then it's the entire thing conjugate then z conjugate then therefore you can actually expand this out and say that this is just the entire thing so e negative gamma times z then divided by c then conjugate itself okay so that's one so now the second one is dealing with one plus um, one plus z conjugate divided by n inverse. Okay, let's fix the inverse up a bit. So if we actually do a little bit of you know, um, if we actually just set the new uh, the denominators equal to each uh, other and then use the butterfly method, then take its inverse, then we see that we'll get n divided by n plus z conjugate. Using those properties, the, um, the denominator whole thing is just a conjugate since n is just a you know a number. So it's the re it's the imagined n is just the imaginary part equal to zero. So we can actually just utilize that. Then that's when I mentioned that. Then you can also do the same thing to the numerator as well. So write that as the conjugate. It's still the same thing. The imaginary part is still zero. Don't forget. Then use the whole extension and say that. Um, let me move this to the next line. Then we could just use the extension that this is the whole thing conjugate itself. So n divided by n plus c, then that's the entire conjugate. And therefore we just go back in reverse and say that this is just its inverse, you know, conjugate. So now this is 1 plus z divided by n, then the inverse, that's the entire thing conjugate. Alright, cool. And so we just have one more thing to verify, and this is actually just very short because it's exactly just using the similar method that we just showed for the first part here with the euler mascheroni constant. And that is e z conjugate divided by n we know that this is just using that same property yet again similar to that it's just e then z divided by n that's the exponents conjugate extend that out even further then it's just the entire conjugate of itself so just like that and so we have all three of the pieces together so now we can actually just plug that back into our you know original equation of the wire stress form so therefore substituting um these three asterisks over here. So now we have that um, gamma of z conjugate is just equal to, so we just plug everything back in, e times negative, um, negative um, lowercase gamma times z divided by z. It's the conjugate itself. Then times the infinite product, n is equal one of one, um, one plus z divided by n inverse and then that's the entire conjugate then multiply with e then z divided by n that's the entire conjugate itself using the property that everything of the conjugates with the products of all the conjugates then that means the entire thing is the conjugate itself so i'm just rewriting the same thing again except so now here product n is equal one one plus z divided by n then inverse, then multiply by e c to the power to the power z divided by n. Then it's the entire thing conjugate, and so therefore we are done to say that this is just the conjugate of the entire gamma function. And just like that, we are done. There we go. And so there we have it. We just showed the right hand, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, just like that. And so yeah, two simple prop, um, two different ways to show the conjugates of. Um, dealing with the, Z, the gamma function of some complex number z, then we can show that the entire gamma function is the conjugate itself. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.